welcome back everybody hopefully you guys are having a much better week than i am uh some pretty bad things have been happening to me this week and i feel like i'm cursed with the uh the death of some animals around me so hopefully you guys are uh, not having the same uh, issues that i am having so story time uh, if you guys want to hear how my week is going so the beginning of the week on my way to work I run over a possum or a raccoon, and obviously it died. And then a couple of days after that, it was raining, and uh, so I get in my car and I'm backing out, and I back out like two feet, and my car like rocks up to one side and goes back down, and I go like, "What? Like what did I just run over?" And I back up a little bit more to see what I ran over, and I was like, "Like I thought for a second, like." Somebody put a pumpkin under my car because everything was like orange and red. And so I get out of my car and I go look at it. And unfortunately, um, I ran over a box turtle. So that was super depressing because turtles are awesome and I rarely ever see a turtle. I think I only see a turtle like once every couple of years. Um, and that might be when I'm mowing the lawn. So that sucked. And then I come home from work today and the very first snake that I buy, the California king snake, is dead. So I'm, I'm cursed on something's going on with me this week. So the Kelly King was fine, or seemed fine, a couple days ago. Uh, she was going into shed, and she went into blue. And I don't know from what happened then till now, but something happened because... She is no longer with us, unfortunately. And I don't know if snakes, I don't know if snakes have issues when they go into to shed. But I was looking back on the paperwork, and she was six or seven. Like I got her from PetSmart, so I can't really tell the exact age on on her. But she wasn't old, and she wasn't young by any means. Uh, so that's uh, that that definitely sucks because you know you never it's never good losing a snake, but it definitely definitely stings a little bit more when uh, it, it's your very first animal that actually got you into uh, snakes and then it's kicked off everything that you see now in in the room and in the videos and the pictures and stuff but uh, again hopefully you guys are having a better week than I am so on a positive note um, all the other snakes are okay and I have to feed all all of them I gotta feed all the ball pythons so that's gonna be a live feeding uh, not on this video but this is the uh, female IMG VPI. Uh, some of you guys have asked about her. I know I've showed her a little bit on the videos, but it's kind of just like when she's in the tubs and kind of just a quick glance. And so this is the sister of the uh, same same litter uh, mate uh, on the, uh, the VPI Aztec. So when she's in shed, she can be a little um, agitated and annoyed. <laughs> so she hisses at me. A little bit, uh, not as much as the uh, the VPI Aztec, but um, she's at least I can handle her and I can take her out of the cage without any issues. But gorgeous snake, beautiful colors on her. Um, it's, it's a little different than what I'm used to seeing uh, because the IMG is the increasing melanin uh, gene, so it definitely makes the snakes darker as they grow, and then. She has the VPI, which is the caramel albino. It's not a true albino, but it's interesting how they kind of fight each other on on, on the uh, the changes of the colors. But she's 2021, pretty big for her age, I think, eating very well. And she's gotten darker since I've gotten her. And I think this is really probably what she's going to look like as an adult. I don't think she's going to get too much darker than this. I think the sides will darken up a little bit. But I think the tops and the saddles will be um, more noticeable. I think her head's going to be noticeable um, without it being completely black. And then I don't think her tail is going to blacken out at all because it has the, uh, the albinoism-ish <laughs> in her. So really cool combo. Kind of unique. Different looking. Um, and then, so, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens in four or five years if I ever want to breed her. But again, uh, every time you breed a snake, you run into the risk of them dying and obviously I don't breed and I've just had one die so you can I mean obviously snakes are going to die um, one way or the other but 
Um, I think it's a added risk on the bigger snakes when uh, when you want to breed them. So it's on the she's on the back burner. Possibly, I mean, it would be cool to make awesome babies with her. I don't have any males, so when she's two or three, uh, then I would get a male, and it takes a year and a half ish for a male to be able to breed. So got to get the timing right on that. But this girl looks really good. Really good. Um, I'll put her back, and then we can just check out some other snakes. All right, let's check out the ghost really fast because I know a lot of you guys like seeing her, and she is one of the bigger snakes that I do have. She's not uh, by any means massively huge, but she's a decent size, and she can be a little uh, bit of a handful to hang on to. So I think ghosts are probably one of my favorite morphs. They are the uh, Anne Jean with the hypo, and then she is 100% head for albino, um, which really didn't matter to me because I, I don't... Um, I don't breed, but I do have the male snow, so um, if I breed the snow to her, I can get more snows and, and moon glows and stuff like that, but if you guys like the moon glows and you guys do like the snows, I would say if you want to get a ghost het, uh, albino, two of them, you can breed them together because there's no lethal genes in that. You can get the super ghosts, and then you can, if you hit, uh, you can get moon glows and uh, snows. And I think ghosts go for 400 bucks, maybe, depending on where you are, give or take a little bit of money on that. And then snows, I think, are going for a thousand, and then moon glows are going for 12 or 13. So it's just an easier way to get into uh, the more expensive stuff if you are on a budget. And you want to wait, you know, four or five years to be able to breed a female. So it does take a while, but you can get some awesome, awesome combos out of them. I do like the colors and, and the uh, the patterns on the ghosts and on her tail, which would probably, there we go. You have the black rings around the brown. Really nice white on her with the brown. Uh, nice belly, nice uh, speckling all over her body, which is kind of cool because um, the ghosts, some have more, some have less, so it's kind of a unique trait for them. I don't know if the super ghosts have the speckling or not. A lot of the super forms really don't do that. Um, and then also in the ball pythons, some of the common ones are the, the basic morphs wouldn't, that would have the speckling. If you get the supers, then, then they don't have that. But this girl is phenomenal and got her from John Chosmer and have had no issues with her super nice i can reach my hand in there and pull her out without any issues which I, which I can't say for a lot of the other boas but um she loves to be held she likes to have her tail wrapped around something or you so she's a little bit difficult to take pictures of because if you lay her out she kind of flops around because she wants to hold on to something and feel secure so pictures are a little bit more difficult but when you hold on to her or if you wrap her around something then She's good to go for quite a while. Um, so I'll put her back and then we can check out some of the snakes in, in, the, uh, in the rack. All right, so we'll check out the newest additions. Um, I know some of you guys don't like ball pythons. And that one pooped. So we do have a male and female mystic potion or the purple passions, which uh, these male and female are a very nice size. They're eating fantastic on rats with no issues i mean i love the pattern on them and i love the colors so they just look really really nice i like the the broken upness on the patterns on her more because it does remind me of the freeways and the highways which i really really like they are a little pricey so that might not be uh, something until i get Next year, and then it's getting colder out, so shipping has kind of has me worried as well. So, really, I like I like how it's the whitish, and then goes into the grayish, and like kind of a purple tint to it uh, on the colors. And these snakes get, I mean, it's it's weird because a lot of ball pythons they dull out and they fade out as they get older, but the mystics look even better as they get into. 
uh, the adult stage because the colors are brighter. And then the circles and the patterns on their sides really start to show a lot more as they grow up. So the orange, or not, I'm sorry, that's the wrong tag. So the leopard, the newer one, uh, the leopard yellow belly clown is in shed, which is a good sign. And now that I lost the snake, while it was in shed, it definitely makes me a little bit nervous that now when my snakes are going in the shed, but maybe that was a fluke and I just have to trust the system and the process with the uh, how the animals work. We have this beautiful lady right here, 2020 IMG Motley Hypo Jungle, and she is 100% Het, Anri, and um, Albino. So a perfect matchup for the uh, for the male snow. Now you always do have the risk when you put albino to albino or head albino to albino when they have messed up eyeballs, missing eyeballs, uh, and stuff like that. So it, it is a little stressful on that. The black pastel pied is growing nicely regular pied she shed out and she had a perfect shed no issues at all it's so weird to me on how some of these snakes have perfect sheds and then we'll look down here so i missed it hers and um so she's in shed and she just pooped like five minutes ago and you can see that she's having a bad shed so i don't know so i missed this down really well and hopefully she can get rid of that. I moved the heater to this side of the room um, because I thought maybe having the heater here was drying out this side of the rack system and then obviously that's not the issue. Don't know why there's a problem with uh, the shed on that. Um, so we'll look at her really fast. Because she shed out a couple of days ago. Uh, the banana, uh, banana pies has female. And this girl has really, really awesome colors and a nice ratio on the the pattern with the with the pied with the white, which is really cool. I'm really excited for her uh, in the future because any male pied that goes to her would uh, would just be phenomenal, uh, make phenomenal babies on on that. So. That is it guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I have to feed almost all of the ball pythons, so it's gonna be live feeding. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, let me know and uh, I'll try to make a video on that. And hopefully you guys have an awesome day and a great weekend. I'll see you guys on the next video.